In the 1940s, homes stayed warm through long winters with a reliability that often surprises modern builders and homeowners. This was not because fuel was cheaper or winters were milder, but because heating systems were designed around physics rather than electronics. The heating trick explored in this episode was so effective that many houses built during that era still feel warmer and more comfortable than modern homes using advanced thermostats and high-efficiency equipment. Understanding how this worked reveals why modern systems struggle to compete despite their technology. Why wartime and post-war homes demanded a different approach to heating. The 1940s were defined by material shortages, fuel rationing and unreliable supply chains. Heating systems had to work with minimal maintenance and inconsistent fuel quality. Engineers could not rely on electronics, sensors or forced airflow systems. Instead, they leaned on gravity, thermal mass, and slow heat release. The goal was not rapid temperature changes, but steady whole house warmth that lasted through the night. This requirement shaped an approach that modern homes, optimized for speed and automation, rarely replicate. Right. So, at the centre of many 1940s homes was a gravity furnace, usually coal-fired at first, though later on many were converted to oil or gas. This gravity furnace truly formed the heart of the whole system, quietly keeping the household warm through even the coldest nights. Now, Unlike the modern forced air furnaces we're used to today, these older systems didn't use any sort of blower at all. Heated air would simply rise naturally through those large ducts and floor grates, while cooler air made its way back down through equally large pathways. The absence of fans meant, well, silence, no drafts rushing about and no rapid loss of heat. Because the airflow was slow, the air actually had more time to soak up warmth, which resulted in a sort of deeper, more lasting heat, rather than those quick bursts of hot air followed by sudden cooling. And here's something interesting. Oversized heat exchangers really made all the difference. Furnaces from the 1940s were intentionally built larger than strictly necessary, giving them the capacity to warm the home thoroughly and steadily, even as outside temperatures dropped. Modern efficiency standards discourage this, but, you know, the logic then was sound. Large heat exchangers absorbed and stored heat for long periods. Even after the fire died down, the furnace body continued radiating warmth. This thermal inertia meant fewer firing cycles and more consistent indoor temperatures. Modern systems, designed to cycle frequently, lose heat rapidly once shut off, creating temperature swings that feel uncomfortable even if the thermostat reads correctly. How thermal mass turned houses into heat batteries the real secret was not just the furnace, but honestly, the house itself. Plaster walls, masonry chimneys, thick wood framing and dense floors absorbed heat throughout the day. Once warmed, these materials released heat slowly over many hours. This transformed the entire structure into a thermal reservoir. Modern drywall and lightweight construction lack this capacity, forcing heating systems to work constantly to maintain comfort. In a 1940s home, the building itself did much of the work. You know, radiant warmth really mattered more than just the air temperature itself. Folks back in the 1940s 
Well, they experienced warmth in a different way altogether. Radiant heat coming from warm walls, floors, and ceilings actually reduced the amount of heat lost from the body. So, even when the air temperature was on the lower side, rooms still felt comfortable and cosy. These days, most modern systems focus on heating the air, not the surfaces. The thing is, warm air rises and escapes, while those cold walls just keep drawing heat out from the people inside. It's a bit ironic, really, because it means we're often less comfortable, even though the air might technically be warmer. Now, here's something you might not have thought about. Chimneys weren't just for exhaust. Back in the 1940s, those big masonry chimneys were actually part of the heating system. They acted as vertical heat stores. As the exhaust gases passed through, the masonry would soak up the heat and then radiate it back into the living spaces for hours on end. That's why you often see chimneys running right through the centre of older houses. These days, modern metal flues just vent the heat outdoors as quickly as possible, which honestly sacrifices a really valuable source of passive warmth. All for efficiency metrics that, well, don't really take lived experience into account. So, how can modern builders actually apply these principles today? The lesson here isn't to just reinstall coal furnaces, but rather to reintroduce the underlying physics. It's about understanding what made those old systems work so well, and, you know, finding ways to use that knowledge in today's homes. Adding thermal mass through masonry walls, concrete floors, or even plaster finishes can, honestly, dramatically improve comfort. Designing homes with central chimneys or masonry heater cores lets you store heat, even if you're using modern fuel sources. Slowing airflow in heating systems and using lower temperature, longer duration heating cycles well, that really helps reduce drafts and heat loss. And just by placing heating ducts within the conditioned envelope instead of up in the attic, you're actually replicating a key advantage from the 1940s. So, why do modern homes struggle to match this kind of performance? Well, modern construction tends to prioritise speed, lightweight materials and mechanical control above all else. It's a different approach, and honestly, that's why we see such a big difference today. Well, while these homes might look efficient on paper, they really do rely entirely on active systems. And you know, when the power fails or, say, the fuel supply is interrupted, Comfort just disappears rather quickly. The 1940s approach, on the other hand, created real resilience. Heat lingered. Structures stayed warm longer. This is why, you know, older homes often remain habitable during outages, while newer ones cool rapidly. What this heating trick teaches us is something about forgotten design priorities. The 1940s heating method reflects a time when buildings were designed as systems, not just collections of products. Engineers understood that comfort, well, it came from a balance between heat generation, storage, and release. Modern systems, for all their cleverness, excel at control, but often ignore storage. Relearning this lesson offers, really, a path to homes that are not just efficient, but genuinely comfortable. Why does this knowledge remain relevant today? As energy costs rise and grid reliability becomes, let's face it, uncertain, the value of passive comfort only grows. 
The 1940s heating trick is not obsolete technology, but rather a reminder that some problems were already solved using simple principles. By studying and adapting these methods, modern builders and homeowners can, well, achieve warmth that technology alone struggles to deliver. If this deep dive into forgotten heating wisdom added value to your understanding of how homes once worked, subscribe to In the Beginning and share this episode with fellow history enthusiasts, builders and survival-minded viewers who appreciate solutions that time has already tested.